calling the Greensville County School Board meeting uh, for February 12th to order at this time. We would like at this time to take a moment of out of silence and recognition because we have lost two of our employees within the last couple of weeks. Um, our guidance counselor from Wyatt Middle School, Mr. Julius Webb, and a long-term teacher from Greensville Elementary, this is Penny Grizzett. So if we could take a moment of silence and respect for them. Thank you all. At this time, we will have our roll call. Madam Chair Janet Roberts. Present. Vice Chair Rustin Jesse. Here. Mr. Ron L. Pearson. Here. Mrs. Bessie Reed Moore. Here. A quorum has been established. Thank you. We will move to our invocation from Mr. Rustin Jesse. Uh, bow our heads, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening with heavy hearts. Uh, while we all are, are trying to survive the, the morning of the two losses of our employees, we ask that you stay with us, not only emotionally, but physically. Um, we ask that you still guide and direct us as a school board as we try to keep the youth first in our area and all of our decision making. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Jessica. Dr. Edwards, uh, I will turn it over to you to share our GCPS mission and vision. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, our GCPS mission is together with families in the community, Greensville County Public Schools is committed to providing a safe, rigorous, student-centered environment that empowers learners. Our vision, transforming lives, impacting futures, cultivating excellence. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Now I'll entertain a motion for the agenda. So moving. Second. Move to properly second that we adopt the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Yes, have it. The motion stands. Now, seek an approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. So moved to properly second that we accept the minutes and agree to meet it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All right. All right. The approval of warrants. We seek a motion for the approval of warrants. So move. Second. It's been moved and probably second that we approve the warrants. All those who are in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Those who oppose, nay. The aye is happy. I will turn it over to Thank you, Madam Chair. At this time, we will begin our superintendent's report with our special recognition. At this time, I'd like to call Mrs. Riddick for to begin our special recognitions for the month of February. Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Edwards, colleagues and guests, good evening. We have quite a few recognitions tonight, so please bear with us. Um, it's a great thing. First, we're gonna have student recognition. Um, Greensville County High School student, Travion Spruill. Is Mr. Spruill present? Dr. Dr. Halls, can you come forward also? Travion is being recognized for being awarded the four, Virginia 4-H four Youth an Action Award for Agriculture at the 2024 Evening in Virginia 4-H. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Next, we're going to start with our competitive division competition. Up first, we have the Clean School Award that goes back to Greensville County High School. Everybody so shout out to the custodial staff at Greensville County High School for their hard work. Scott. Oh, Scott. Best student attendance. Wow, at seventy six percent, Greensville County High School. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Halls, you can stay. Best staff attendance, Greensville County High School oh, at 93.8%. Wow. wow. That's the first sweep. Valentine's Day is not only is not the only special day during the month of February. February is Black History Month, CTE Month, School Board Appreciation Month, School Counselor Week, School Board Clerk Appreciation Week, and School Resource Officer Appreciation Day. I have leaned on my colleagues to assist me in this month's recognition. Black History Month is celebrated each year in February to recognize the significant contributions that Black Americans have made in our nation's history. It is a time to collectively celebrate racial pride, assess our nation's commitment to ideals of freedom and reflect on the, um, commemorate the struggle for freedom and equality. Ms. Rita Williams, Director of Pupil Personnel will read the proclamation. Good evening, Madam Chair, board member. Certificate of recognition. Black History Month, whereas February is recognized and commemorated in the United States as Black History Month, and we recognize the people, historic events, and the cultural moments that have shaped American and world history in our society today. And whereas the Commonwealth of Virginia at Fort Monroe was the site where the first Africans were brought in shackles to America as slaves, and later Fort Monroe served as the first legal safe haven for freedom seekers before the Emancipation Proclamation. And whereas throughout American history, black Virginians have shown resilience and perseverance through political, social, and cultural oppression from slavery through Jim Crow and massive resistance and have risen above the shape of our lives today in countless ways. And whereas Virginia, was home to many distinguished and important Black Americans, including civil rights pioneer Oliver Hill, Spotswood Robinson, Booker T. Washington, Dr. Robert Rusa Moulton, Maggie L. Walker, Dorothy Height, and Mary W. Jackson, to name a few. And whereas Virginia legal pioneers Oliver Hill and Spotswood Robinson dedicated their lives to civil rights activism, working through the NAACP Legal Defense Fund on major cases, including Davis versus the County Board Education of Prince Edward County, which was one of the four lawsuits decided under Brown versus the Board of Education, enacting historic desegregation in schools across the country, and whereas the Virginian education pioneer, Dr. Robert Rusa Moulton, served at Hampton Institute, later Hampton University, as succeeded Booker T. Washington as principal of Tuskegee University. 
and whereas businesswoman and community leader Maggie Nina Walker, born in 1864 as the Civil War raged across Virginia, achieved national prominence as the first woman in the United States to establish a bank. And whereas Richmond native Dorothy Height, a civil rights companion, served as president of the National Council of Negro Women and co-organized alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. the March on Washington in 1966. And whereas mathematician and aerospace engineer Mary W. Jackson from Hampton, Virginia, was NASA's first black female engineer, but she worked for 34 years and was an essential part of the Hidden Figures team that successfully launched American astronauts into space. Whereas black Virginians continue to shape the economic, culture, and political landscape of Virginia and the country, and whereas Virginia commemorates the historic first and political leadership in our Commonwealth with the election of Lieutenant Governor Winston Early Sears, Speaker Don Scott, and Senate, and Senate President Pro Temp Louis Lucas. And whereas today we, will, we recognize the historical obstacles and injustices that have been overcome, the work yet to be done, and stand in celebration for the successes of those who dare to challenge odds and barriers, and we, and we remain committed to the bright future of opportunities for all. Now, therefore, I, Glenn Youngkin, do hereby recognize February 2024 as Black History Month in our Commonwealth of Virginia. And I call this observance to the attention of our citizens. Governor Yonkin and Secretary of, Commission of the Commonwealth is Kelly G. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. At this time, we will ask Dr. Kerry to come and uh, administer school resource officers. School Resource Officer Appreciation Day. The National Association of School Resource Officers encourages schools and communities to recognize the valuable work of their school resource officers during National School Resource Officer Appreciation Day, which is February 15th. Dr. Marcus Carey, Director of Administrative Services, will read the proclamation and recognize our school resource officers and school safety officers. Good evening, Madam Clerk. Board of Education, Division Superintendent, Dr. Kelvin Edwards, Senior. Um, could we have the school resource officers and school security officers join us? Join me up here, please. Certificate of Recognition, School Resource Officer Appreciation Day. Whereas the Commonwealth of Virginia is dedicated to making schools safe for all students, faculty, staff, and the communities they serve. And whereas school resource officers are critical members of the educational community who dedicate their lives to keeping students and schools secure. And whereas there are over 1,000 exceptionally trained, dedicated men and women in law enforcement who serve as school resource officers in our elementary, middle, and high schools providing support and encouragement and serving as role models, law enforcement officers, and educators. And whereas school resource officers serve across the Commonwealth as partners with school staff to ensure students have a safe place to learn. And whereas the Commonwealth of Virginia has one of the longest running, most robust school resource officer programs in the nation. Now, therefore, I, Glenn Youngkin, do hereby recognize February 15th, 2024, as School Resource Officer Appreciation Day in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I call this observance to the attention of all our citizens. Thank you, Dr. Carey. School Counselor Appreciation Week. National School Counseling Week 2024 is February 5th through 9th, 2024 to focus public attention on the unique contribution of school counselors within the United States school systems. National School Counselor Week sponsored by AC, ASCA highlights the tremendous impact school counselors have in helping students achieve success and plan for a career. National School Counseling Week is always celebrated the first full week in February. The theme, count school counseling, standards-based, student focus. Ms. Cynthia Whitaker, Director of Testing, will read the proclamation and recognize school counselors. Good 
Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, and all in attendance. Certificate of recognition. By virtue of the authority vested by the Constitution of Virginia in the governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, there is hereby officially recognized school counseling week. Whereas school counselors work diligently in public and private schools to help students reach their full potential. And whereas school counselors are valued members of the academic team who work to provide tools for academic, personal and emotional success for their students. And whereas school counselors are actively committed to helping students explore their abilities, strengths, interests, and talents, and utilize these factors to further career awareness and development. And whereas school counselors help parents and families focus on ways to further the educational, personal, and social growth of their children, and whereas school counselors work with teachers and other educators to help students explore their potential and set goals for their future. And whereas school counselors seek to identify and utilize community resources that can enhance and complement comprehensive school counseling programs and help students become productive members of society. And whereas Comprehensive developmental school counseling programs are considered an integral part of the educational process that enables all students to achieve success in school. Now, therefore, I, Glenn Youngkin, do hereby recognize February 5th through 9th, 2024, as School Counseling Week in our Commonwealth of Virginia. And I call this observance to the attention of our citizens. Can we um, have all the school counselors please report to the front? Thank you. School counselor, a patient, empathetic, and resourceful professional who helps students with their goals and challenges. A multitasking ninja who collaborates with teachers, administrators, and parents to develop and implement plans for diverse learners, advocating for students, fostering resilience, and restoring hope. A natural born problem solver who often thinks outside the box and a real life hero, excuse me, a real life superhero who does not wear a cape. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. CTE month every February, the CTE community celebrates CTE month to raise awareness of the role that the CTE has in readying learners for college and career success. Ms. Lamika Harrison, Director of College and Career Readiness, will recognize our CTE teachers, their accomplishments, and upcoming projects. And read the proclamation. Good evening, Madam Chair. Board members, Dr. Edwards, I would ask the amazing, marvelous CTE teachers, instructors, leaders, experts that are in the room to please go to the front before I read this proclamation, please. That was well said, Ms. Harrison. <laughs> you too, Ms. Drummond. This is an amazing group that does great work, so I just needed you all to look at them while I read this. Certificate of Recognition. By virtue of the authority vested by the Constitution of Virginia and the Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, there 
is hereby officially recognized Career and Technical Education Month. Whereas every student in the Commonwealth should graduate from high school prepared for success in life, and whereas career and technical education allows for the exploration of career pathways, development of workplace skills, stackable certificates, and industry-recognized credentials, and whereas career and technical education is the foundation of a strong, well-educated workforce that fosters productivity in industry and contributes to Virginia's leadership in the international marketplace, and whereas career and technical education offers lifelong learning opportunities that provide individuals with marketable skills, informed career choices, and expanded post-secondary options that ensure higher earning potentials, job satisfaction, and long-term goals for their futures. And whereas the cooperative and ever-increasing efforts between career and technical educators, administrators, and representatives of business and industry stimulate the growth of the Commonwealth's economy by preparing students for careers in high demand, high skill, and high wage fields. And whereas the national theme of Career and Technical Education Month, Celebrate Today, Own Tomorrow, demonstrates the crucial, excuse me, crucial role that career and technical education plays in readying Virginia students for successful careers. Now, therefore, I, Glenn Youngkin, do hereby recognize February 2024 as Career and Technical Education Month in our Commonwealth of Virginia and call this observance to the attention of our citizens. Signed, Governor Glenn Youngkin and Secretary of the Commonwealth, Kelly G. And I am convinced that he contacted Greensville when he wrote this because everything in it represents those that stand before you. So as they stand, I'll let you know what's happening in CTE month. So today, and Ms. Small wasn't able to be with us today, but today kicked off our Start on Success program. And that is in partnership with VCU Center on Transition Innovations. And it is a program for our students with disabilities who are pursuing standard diplomas to give them an opportunity for work-based learning experiences. And we have three students who are participating. They started work today. So a shout out to our business partners, Hampton Inn, Comfort Inn, and GCPS Department of Transportation. So thank you all so very much. On this Friday, February the 16th, um, we will have our CTE Black History Program, Living the Dream, Look How Far We've Come. Our guest speaker will be the Honorable Judge Lindia per Person Ramsey. And there will be a CTE Black History display that's gonna be set up in the gym to honor the past and celebrate the present. On February the 21st, GCPS media team will release our We Are CTE video. So stay tuned for that to come to showcase everything that we're doing within CTE. February the 23rd, our cosmetology students will be hitting the road to Atlanta for the Browner Brothers International Beauty Show, giving them the opportunity to attend classes and observe several competitions. And um, February the 28th, we're really, really excited about our Working Wednesdays. Working Wednesdays will be an initiative in partnership with our local businesses that they could come into our schools on the fourth Wednesday of each month and meet with our students to talk about career exploration and bring our hard and soft skills to real life for them. And so our presenters for the month of February include the Atlantic Union Bank, the City of Emporia Community and, and Economic Development Office, and the Greensville Emporia Extension Office. So we are seeking our local business partners, agencies, and leaders to come in to help us on the fourth Wednesday of each month. The flyer will be posted tomorrow. So everybody under the sound of my voice, I can't wait to hear from you. So thank you for your time and everything that we're doing in CTE. We appreciate all the support of our students and our staff. Thank you so much. Dr. Edwards, Dr. Edwards, we would like for the CTE people to turn around to the board. And get, and appreciate oh, sorry. You would, and you would share your name and what Pleasure. you're teaching. So you are. Uh, Mr. Edwards, I am computer uh, studies. 
Okay. James Wright Carpenter. Okay. Sarah White, Business Management, JBG, Personal Finance and Economics. Thank you. Carla Board members, the Working Wednesdays and Black History Program flyers are in your folders. Thank you, uh, Ms. Whitaker, Ms. Williams, Dr. Carey, and Ms. Harrison. Next, um, we have School Board Appreciation Month. Join us in saluting the service of over 800 board members in Virginia in February 2024 during School Board Appreciation Month. The theme this year, the heart of education, our school boards. Acknowledges that school board is at the heart of education guiding it with kindness and care. The month-long observance is an opportunity for our school division and community to build a stronger understanding of the crucial role school boards assume in representing our school division. School boards voluntarily tackle the enormous job of governing multi-million dollar public school divisions while preserving the core of our democratic values. I would like to ask the audience to please stand. To the Greensville County School Board, Madam Chair Janet Roberts, Vice Chair Rustin Jesse, Mr. Ron L. Pearson, Ms. Bessie Reed Moore, through your dedication, governance, advocacy, and collaboration, you are building the future of education for Greensville County Public Schools, and we thank you. Join me in giving them a round of applause. <laughs> Board members, can you please come forward to receive your tokens of appreciation. Guys, you may be seated. Our final recognition is School Board Clerk Appreciation, which is celebrated this week, February 12th through 16th. The theme is the heartbeat of the boardroom. Dr. Edwards will read the proclamation and recognize the school board clerk and deputy clerk. Ms. Roberts will.
<laughs> school board association, school board appreciation week, February 12 through 16. Whereas school board clerks in each locality throughout our great commonwealth are appointed by law to fulfill their duties and responsibilities. And whereas school board clerks are responsible for keeping accurate records of the meetings and proceedings of the school board, a record of all receipts and disbursements, and a record of all official acts. Whereas school board clerks perform such other duties in connection with the school business of his or her county or city or may be required by the school board. And whereas school board clerks maintain frequent contact with the public, including parents, employees, and the media on behalf of the school board and superintendent. And whereas school board clerks in the performance of their duties are often required to work extra hours attending school board meetings. And whereas school board clerks help to ensure students achieve their highest potential and provide an invaluable service to school board members and superintendents. And now, therefore, the VSBA Board of Directors does hereby recognize February 12th through 16th, 2024, as School Board Clerk Appreciation Week in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we certainly, it's a lot of recognitions in the month of February. And at this time, I would like to ask the audience to give all of the rec people that were recognized another round of applause, please. <laughs> Greensboro County Public Schools is under a corrective action plan um, and it's been under one since 2018. And each month, what we do is we update on our corrective action plan, the strategies that we're utilizing to come from under the memorandum of understanding in the corrective with our corrective action plan. And we have the four categories. Our first one is academic and student success. And what we've done um, beginning this month is we've added much more to our platform as we talk about our corrective action plan and to include what our directors are doing, what our chief academic officer is doing, what our chief operation officer is doing, and our chief human resource officer is doing, as well as what we do in federal programs and our chief finance officer, and that includes our maintenance, our transportation. So what each department is doing, we have updated it to give more information as we move forward with coming from under a memorandum of understanding. So I will highlight some points as we go through this. Our first category is academic and student success. Um, we, again, chronic absenteeism. I always want to keep that at the forefront because we need our students in, in school each day so that we can teach our students. And we certainly thank the community because our absenteeism rate is going down. And as you can see, um, the high school this month has had a clean sweep in all categories. So we salute you with our first sweep um, to the Greensville County High School and your team, Dr. Halls. Um, we have our executive principals meeting. We have, and you will see later on in our presentation, our first SOL results as presented from Greensville County High School. We are beginning our second semester. And what you will see is the academic progress of our students from the high school. Next month, you will see the academic progress as presented in benchmarks from GES and also SOL results from Wyatt Middle School. We also, uh, we did executive leadership meetings, which we hold each week at the central office. Our directors meeting, EL teachers, federal programs, and chief academic officer had the pleasure of presenting at the 2024 annual Bridging Worlds Empowering Voices Conference on January the 25th through the 26th. Our chief academic officer, our reading coaches and specialists attended a, weeding, a winter reading institute hosted by the Virginia Department of Education. Our CAO and director of ELA and history and ITRTs also attended the Generative AI Summit 
AI is a big topic in the education world. And you can read the other opportunities that our CAO, our director, have done. Our director of math and science, K-12, and math coach participated in Zern onboarding training on January the 10th. The director of math and science participated in the WIM and Mary Cern math study group on January the 24th with a host of other events. Our director of college and career readiness participated in the Virginia State Police Career Technical Education High Quality Work-Based Opportunities presentation that was held on January the 18th, 2024. Our director of college and career readiness participated in the Region 8 Work-Based Learning with Dr. Hurt of VDOE and Dr. Liggins of VCU on February the 6th. Under leadership and governance, the superintendent participated in vast VTLA school division budgeting session, and we are in our budgeting season, and we will be sending the budgeting survey out um, at the beginning of next week to get community input. The board attended the um, strategic planning with the Berkeley group on January the 3rd, the superintendent, along with curriculum instruction, met with Southside Virginia Community College, and we are looking at making a big announcement in the upcoming month as we talk about an early college here in Greensville County Public School. We participated in the Virginia Literacy Act Symposium, attended the Region 8 superintendent meeting on January the 17th. Under operations and services, if you have not had the opportunity to go by Greensville Elementary School, and I encourage you to do so to look at the new media center that is at Greensville Elementary School. Um, under federal programs, under the direction of Ms. Robinson, um, Ms. Coker and her team, I think we have a world-class media center now at Greensville Elementary School. And while we're talking about Greensville Elementary School, we made the announcement back in December that we were upgrading our playgrounds to include accessible playgrounds. The equipment is in, and we can't wait to get that equipment installed. And if you not had the opportunity also uh, with our partnership with the Improvement Association under Mr. Tyler and his team, we have a brand new modular unit for our babies at Greensville Elementary School, and we, are, we can't wait till you see that as well. We recognize our SROs and SSOs as we participate in safety meetings and I can't thank our SROs, our SSOs enough because safety is paramount everywhere we go. And I also have to extend that safety conversation to the faculty and staff of each school because all of us are responsible for the safety of our students. We attended weekly meetings for attendance and we met with Sonny Merriman to discuss new buses as we move forward in budgeting season. Attended the vast conferences and we're looking at maintenance contracts for our security system and we'll continue our strategic plan meeting and we will be unveiling our strategic plan in the month of May. Under human resources, had substitute training, participated with Frontline, the HR seminar, and um, Dr. Scott had the pleasure of attending the Region 8 job fair in Farmville. We up Farmville and all staff members received, received contract addendums and all staff will begin uh, receiving letters of intent beginning tomorrow, February the 13th. Under finance, as you know, this is the last round of ESSA three federal programs. Ms. Council and Ms. Robinson and the finance team are working diligently to work on spin down of ESSA three. We are reading about future fleet management programs in Greensville County Public Schools. Dr. Scott met with Service Solutions Corporation. Mr. Winningham and his team and you'll see that later tonight, completed our second entry driveway plans for Greensville Elementary School to help with the traffic as we move forward so that that's not such a deterrent in the morning and in the afternoon at dismissal. We also attended a virtual meeting with Finance on Disabilities Elig Eligibility Act, and we had a recap of EFM on current and sold vehicles, and we have, again, our monthly finance updates, and you will hear from Ms. Council later. Madam Chair, that concludes the updated Greensville County uh, Corrective Action Plan. And I would like also ask um, to our narrators, Mr. Redman, would you pull up our components of our project canvas so I can say something about that as well?
Thank you so much. Um, we have what we call wow sessions. It's called working on the work. And we hold them twice a month. What each department does is they pull what the work they are working on and we include it in this project canvas. As you know, we're in partnership with the Virginia Department of Education with our memorandum of understanding. And we want to ensure that we're keeping accurate records of all correspondence that we, of projects that we are working on. So each department completes a project canvas. We will be aligning all project canvases with the new strategic plan and be disseminating our communication, whether it's in finance, transportation, maintenance, school nutrition. Each department does a project campus canvas to give us updates so that we are accurately reflecting in writing the work that is being done in Greensville County Public Schools. Because your words are good, but there has to be something in writing to signify and solidify the work that is being done. And I say thank you to each department and that once we submit our project canvases and this is our running record. So thank you to the team and we will be featuring these each month in the CAP update. Thank you, Dr. Edwards. Now, if you would share with us the most important division report. Absolutely. At this time, I would like to call Dr. Farkerson um, forward as we give some good news that was shared as we move forward with the improvement here in Greensville County Public Schools. Just in case I needed them. Good evening, Madam Chair. Ms. Kerry. Dr. Edwards, board members, I want, I'm not going to read it in its entirety because it's a little lengthy, but I do want to highlight um, a few parts of an article that was written about Greensville County Public Schools and um, just let you shout. So you can, you can move from the, the data part. So this part I am going to read. In a previous paper, Tales of Student Success in 2023, the successes of four of the top five divisions that realized the greatest improvement in SOL pass rates in 2023 were highlighted. Since then, I was afforded the opportunity to visit Greensville County, the division that realized the greatest improvement in Virginia. Mm. Wait. <laughs> think you all actually heard what I just said because you should be standing up shouting like Absolutely. you were on the television yesterday when you were watching the Super Bowl. I said the division in Virginia that realized the greatest improvement. Yes, that's what I said. Okay, you can all be seated now. So, um, Matt Hurt, the director I, for comprehensive instructional I can programs. See, I can see, uh, Dr. Parker, some of our employees don't think that's such a great accomplishment. Um, but <laughs> you team, want to do it again? Uh, yeah. So, the greatest <laughs> improvement in Virginia. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> so, Wow. Matt Hurt, comprehensive, the director for comprehensive and instructional program, CIP, who we will be working with it during the 24-25 school year, um, came down, met with some of our staff, and had some conversations, and then um, produced this article that is fabulous. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he said, during this visit, teachers and administrators outlined the aspects in their division, which they felt led to these significant improvements. They felt that increased focus on relationships, expectations, leadership, and focusing on the positives helped them to ensure more successes for their students than in the past. Teachers reported that when they began more purposefully building relationships with students, their students responded very positively. Students were more likely to try hard in class. The educators all noted a very significant paradigm shift in expectations over the past couple of years. 
In Greensville County, educators began focusing on the positive, no matter how small. When students began to show progress after struggling with the skill, they are praised to a significant degree. When teachers show even incremental gains, when student, I'm sorry, when teachers show even incremental, instru, incremental gains on their assessments throughout the years, administrators make a really big deal about it. Teachers and principals report that focus on, focusing on any improvements, regardless of size, really incentivize more of the same behavior. They shared that early smaller successes snowball into bigger successes over time. This article will be on our website. Dr. Edwards will let you know what social media outlets and platforms it's gonna be shared with so that you can read it in its entirety yourself. And again, I reiterate the greatest improvements in Virginia, best day yet. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Ferguson, and to all of you who helped to make this absolutely. possible. Absolutely. We appreciate you, and we say keep up the good work. Now we're going to move to the Improvement Association. Ron Keisha Kelly will present the Improvement Association update. Yes. We'd like to welcome Mr. Tyler and Ms. Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Thank Thanks you for our so partnership. Thank well, anyway, um, to Madam Chair and um, to school board members and to your outstanding superintendent and so committed to education uh, in this area, um, thank you for giving us the opportunity for being here and also to our distinguished citizen who are present. Um, we also come to bring good news. Uh, so um, one good news is that uh, as director of the Improvement Association, we think we have one of the best Head Start program in the state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, but just to, to give you just a brief synopsis in terms of what we're all about, um, and I know we want to be brief, uh, the Improvement Association will actually came and existed in 1968 a long time ago in, in Sussex County. And uh, of course, over the years, we expand out, serve the Sarah uh, Greens Emporia, Brunswick, and of course, Dinwiddie. But back in the uh, 90s, there was a community need assessment conducted uh, in those particular localities. And one of the things that was identified that an early intervention program, early childhood program, will help enhance kids' performance prior to getting kindergarten. And we ventured out to start the Head Start program. And we wrote the grant and we were successful. And uh, Madam Chair, if you remember those days that you was at the forefront on the foundation. So here we are, you see your fruits of your labor. Uh, you worked hard on our committees and councils and um, uh, we did it together. I'd like to thank the school division for their partnership. Uh, your superintendent and your administrative staff team has been nothing but a good partners to work with. Uh, our mission of the Improvement Association is to work with families, not just on the child, but the families, to move them towards self-sufficiency. Uh, we have our board of directors, which consists of representatives from Sussex, Sarah Greens, Emporia, and Brunswick, other areas. Uh, is the guiding policy making body for our organization. Uh, and I'm just a conduit to carry out what they want me to do. Uh, tonight, we would like to recognize also some of our team members who uh, helped make the improvement association what it is uh, over the day. If it's not staff who stand, who with us with the improvement association, some of our education staff, so our support staff Absolutely. are here. We thank you for what, what you do as well, uh, as well. But I would like to also, <laughs> they, work hard, they work hard every day uh, to make sure families are served in our locality. Um, I would also like to just say that um, we have an outstanding director. Uh, I think she's one of the best in the state. Uh, she works hard. Uh, she's a good team player. Yeah, I yes. mean that. I said openly, and our boy means well, uh, to get things done. 
And uh, so at this time, I would have Ms. Kelly to come and we'll go with the PowerPoint. Any questions you might have, we entertain those at that time. Dr. Edwards, you didn't clap when he said best head start director. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Gallagher, for all you do. And you also, Mr. Talent. Thank you, all of you, and to our teachers. Thank you. Good evening uh, to the board and to uh, Dr. Edwards and to everyone. Uh, once again, I'm Keisha Kelly, the head start director with the Improvement Association. Um, I want to take this opportunity to share just a little bit of data concerning the Greensville and Emporia Head Start classrooms that we have here um, within the county and the city. Overall, we have 33 scholars ranging between ages three and five. Thank you. Ranges between ages three and five. Uh, we have two classrooms, one at the Greensville Elementary School um, in the modular there. Thank you uh, with your assistance with that modular. And we have one at the Eleanor Jarrell Worship Center. Two teachers we have um, at Greensville, Ms. Hawthorne, and at Eleanor Jarrell, Ms. Yates. Two teacher assistants at Greensville, Ms. Smith, and at Eleanor Jarrell, Ms. Williams. We have six support staff to include family service staff, health staff, and compliance, those who make sure that we are running the agencies to fidelity. This year alone, we have conducted 99 home visits. As you know, with Head Start, home visits are mandated. Mm -hmm. So 99 required home visits have been conducted since um, August. 33 parent-teacher conferences have been conducted, one field trip, and two community events. And we have assisted a host of families with comprehensive services, such as providing food, uh, utility, mortgage, and rental assistance as some of the things that we have done for comprehensive services. Here we have the data for our curriculum with Head Start. We use, uh, with the Improvement Association Head Start, we use creative curriculum um, where that curriculum focuses on academic and exploration for the students. Here you see the data for the curriculum that focus on social, emotional, physical, language, cognition, literacy, and math. In the blue, and these are our fall outcomes. In the blue, we have those that came in below. Uh, orange is meeting and red is exceeding. And when we return back in May or June of this year to give you our school update, you will notice that the blue and the red switch places because our teachers work fairly hard with the students to make sure they meet those milestones. Here we have our class data and what class is, it's an um, scoring system that focuses on the interactions within the classroom amongst teacher students, student students and teacher teachers. Um, there are three domains for class, emotional support, classroom organization and instructional support. Within those three domains, there are a total of about 14 areas that we look at within a two hour span uh, when we go into the classroom to observe. And here you will see the improve the scores for the Improvement Association, and you will see the scores for um, nationwide. And as you can see, we have exceeded the nationwide scores for um, our fall 2023. Mm -hmm. And when we come back in spring, I am 100% sure that we will still exceed uh, those class scores. One of the things that we focused on this year is we realized that we were getting students that were scholars, sorry, that was born uh, during COVID. So we knew the different um, challenges that will be faced. So what we did is we enhanced the amount of professional development, whereas every four Friday, there is some type of professional development for our staff. And we truly focused on um, challenging behaviors, along with literacy and approaches to learning. So here you see the Virginia language and literacy screener, uh, similar to PALS, and where this focus on the letter names, sounds and syllables and beginning and um, sounds and matching of the sounds. In the blue, you will notice those students that came in beginning, orange is meeting and gray 
is exceeding. And just like the data for our curriculum, when we come back in June, you will notice um, the blue and the gray uh, changing. And this uh, screening is done twice a year, whereas class is done twice a year, but curriculum is done on a daily basis. That data is updated daily. One of the main components in Head Start is parent engagement. So we have to make sure that we provide many ways that parents can engage in their child's learning. Um, and these are some of the ways that they can participate uh, showing up and being home when we try to come and visit, uh, attending those parent uh, center activities and those parent teacher conferences, volunteering in the classroom. And the good thing about Head Start, if the parent cannot come into the classroom, we welcome any family member that will represent the family to come into the classroom. Um, they will. There is a process that they have to follow. And allow me to say something right here. Uh, Dr. Edwards talked about uh, school attendance. When our home visitor go to a home and head start child's there, many of those families have kids in elementary school, even middle school. Right. We emphasize, we re-emphasize re re and reinforce your philosophy to make sure that they go to school. Thank you. So that's that's extremely important on the partnership. Yes, sir. Awesome. Thank you. And on this evening, we do have a parent who would like to come and speak with you. Her name is Mrs. Wood. Uh, she would like to come and just tell you about her experience and Head Start. So at this time, I will give it over to Mrs. Wood. Nice testimony. Good evening. Good evening. All right. My name is Kiara Wood. I was excited when my daughter was accepted as a Head Start student at the Illinois Gerald Worship Center site. As a first time parent, I wanted my child to have a jump start on her education. Education shows us the importance of hard work, helps us grow and develop and have more opportunities in life. Education provides stability, financial security, equality, self-dependency. It allows us, it allows our dreams to come true, a safer world, confidence, being a part of society, economic growth, as well as it protects us, having the need, needed knowledge for various aspects. I didn't know what to expect as I enrolled her into the program, but as I have volunteered and observed from my, observed from my observations and engagement, with her outside of school setting. She has learned things such as identifying alphabets, identifying numbers, patterns, social emotional skills, following directions, and self-help skills. But with that uh, added bonus was learning the importance of hygiene and nutrition. The program has also provided me and other parents with information in relation to job readiness, financial literacy, health, and parenting skills. I highly recommend this program. I love how I can be a part of my daughter's educational journey mm -hmm. while also learning and being provided with educational information to further my own knowledge and skills. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you, Ms. Wood. I will, before I leave, I would also like to thank Dr. Carey with his collaborative support with Pre-K. We work fairly well together with um, coordinated enrollment. And uh, I do appreciate you, Dr. Carey, and your support and how much when, whenever we need something, you are there to make sure that we have what we need on the Pre-K side. So thank you so much for that. Uh, at this time, we do have some tokens of appreciation that we would like to present to the board. And again, we say thank you for everything that you do. It, we are so appreciative. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. At this time, are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to say, we don't have any questions. We just have words of praise and mm. thanks for all that you all do. Yes. Mr. Tyler and I, we worked on this years ago. My heart still is beating strong for our history. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you for this. And Mr. Tyler and to the Improvement Association team. So I was calculating when those scholars will be graduating. And Ms. Coca, the like you can get a super bunch at GES. And as they matriculate to wide middle. So the class of 27, 30, 
37, 20, 40, we ought to be some shiny stars, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yonder update. That's Mr. Sylvester and Mercedes Mallory will present the Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, school board members, Dr. Edwards, thank you so much for this opportunity to share the um, staff perceptions of the Yonder program. As you know, we did a survey in September, after the first month of implementation, we had 52 respondents. Um, we did another survey at the end of the semester and we had 57 respondents. So we'd like to share the results of the current survey and compare it to the previous survey. Ms. Mallory, and so would you and Mr. Zidantowicz, um, when you know, we have a lot of acronyms in this business and for those who may not know what Yonder is, would you just ex briefly explain that please? Yes, Yonder is our cell phone enforcement where the students come in in the mornings and put their phones in AirPods, uh, watches, everything, anything electronic into this pouch. And then they put the pouch into, back into the basket and it's kept locked up for the whole day until they are dismissed for the bus. Mm -hmm. um, and we sent out surveys for the teachers to kind of differentiate a base on the student performance. How are they in class engagement wise? How has their behavior been? And we're going to present the data for the end of the first semester. This is our pilot year for this year for the Yonder Pouches. Um, for student academic performance, we did have 75, student, 75 staff members. Of I'll be telling how many staff members based on the percentages on the board. For the academic performance where you see the 45.6 for slightly improved, that was a total of 26 staff members that said that. 14 said that they were significantly improved, and then 17 said there was no change in the student academic performance. All right, and then this is the difference between the first survey and the second survey. For slightly improved and slightly significantly improved, it increased from 69 to 70%, and then there was no responses for slightly decreased or in significantly decrease in the academic performance. So. For student behavior, 24 staff members said that it's slightly improved. 20 staff members said it's significantly improved. Three staff members said that it was slightly worse. And 10 staff members said there was no change at all. Comparing from the first one to the second one, we went from 71% to 77%. And then this is the second highest for slightly improved and slightly significantly improved for our survey. For the student engagement piece, we have that 23 staff members said that it was slightly improved. We had 21 that said it was significantly improved. We had one staff member said it was slightly worse. And then we had 12 that said there was no change at all. In this, the difference from the first survey, we had 70%. The second one, we had 77% of saying that it was slightly improved and significantly improved. This was the highest percentage increase for us in these two categories. For teaching and learning time, the engagement piece, <laughs> we had 19 staff members say that it was slightly increased. We had 21 staff members say that it was significantly increased. We had one staff member said there was slightly worse. And then we had 16 staff members said there was no change in the teaching and learning time. The comparison between the two, we went from 73% to decrease to 70%. And then the quantitative data suggests that this is due to the logistics of the program of first and six periods, where we went from a block schedule from the four to the six periods a day with only an hour class versus 90 minutes. For overall satisfaction of the staff members and how everything has been implemented thus far, we had 39% say they were very satisfied. We had one that was very dissatisfied 
two that were slightly dissatisfied. We had eight with no opinion, and we had seven that were slightly satisfied. So overall, the teachers enjoy the yonder pouches and the difference that it does make in the classrooms. And this is the difference from the first one. We went from very satisfied to from 59% to 68%. The slightly satisfied was from 76 to 81%, and then with a combined of 80.7% on the survey. And Mr. Z is going to take over from here. We also had an optional um, question for the teachers to put in comments. So we've just highlighted a few here. Um, one staff member said they were first first year teacher, so they didn't really have anything to compare it to. But based on the comments of their peers, they felt that they were very satisfied with the program. Um, we had another several people said they were satisfied with the yonder program and they hoped that it would continue next year uh, we had a few that said the students not having the cell phones really impacted the behavior it really helped the behavior there's still some behavior problems yonder is not the end all and be all but they felt that the behavior was not as bad as it was in previous years and then i want to highlight two my favorite comments um because these touch on not only on the classroom but on other aspects of the school so one said the biggest changes they saw were in the common areas the hallways the cafeterias and the restrooms um it takes away from the time that they had to spend correcting student behaviors with their phone texting and things like that dr edwards has talked to us before we had problems last year with students texting each other, saying we're going to fight, then getting together, and then having other students film the fight. We've taken all that off the table. I think that's positive. And then my favorite mm -hmm. comment, we feel that students are learning to talk to one another rather than relying on social media. They are mm -hmm. learning social skills that will benefit them in a career setting later in life. Absolutely. So I think Yonder has helped us not only in the classroom, but in the common areas, and it's going to benefit the students in the long run. So we thank you for your attention, and we welcome any questions that you may have. And as a teacher that teaches a core class, I have definitely enjoyed them learning to look for their answers in their notes versus using their cell phone to Google the answer. So that has definitely made me feel better as a teacher because a lot of them use their interactive notes, whether it's color coding, they're writing it, or they know, oh, I wrote that down somewhere, and then they go look for it. So the engagement piece is definitely a very great thing. Any questions? I don't have a question, just a comment. Um, I know this is the pilot year of this, so to think that it was going to be smooth is an understatement. Um, but how you and your staff have handled the transition of this um, in four or five short months has been very rewarding. And we would just um, have you guys to keep your head up and continue to fight that good fight because it is showing a difference. Yes, our admin has very been diligent on problem solving on hand. <laughs> so I do commend our admin for that. Any more questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. For all the good work. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair. Good evening. Board members and Dr. Edwards. The financial updates are as follows. All warrants have been submitted and we are currently in the fiscal year 2025 budget year working diligent to make things happen for the new fiscal year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Scott, we'll present our operations department update. Good evening, Madam, Madam Chair, board members, and all assembled. 
The operations update presentation tonight is about the new school exit plan for Greensburg County Elementary School. <laughs> this plan is the, our maintenance department will create a, an, an easement between the church on the right of the school, of the school and the, G, and the GES visitors parking lot. It is designed to relieve the traffic buildup during arrival and dismissal times at G, GES. What's the video? Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Edwards, and everyone assembled here. Um, we're excited about getting this started. Uh, we've been talking about this for several years, trying to find funding, and uh, we finally found the funding and have the plans done. Uh, just a quick um, how this looks. I know this is just a snapshot, but if you come in the, the driveway of GES, and turn left, it would actually immediately turn left. It would actually take you straight towards the church where the crosses are. We intend on going up that hill, making a left and using the existing drive at the church to make an exit, a right turn only exit out of the school. This would alleviate the mornings of everyone trying to get in and out of the same entrance and exit. Uh, we've spoken with the Sheriff's Department and uh, worked on this with them. We really believe it'll be a great improvement, uh, especially with safety. Uh, all those students trying to come in and parents trying to come in, the bus is on one side and everybody coming in the middle has been a, a safety concern, like you said, for years. And again, this is not a fix everything. Everyone still has to be careful because of just the sheer number of people that come in and that 30 minutes, 45 minutes in the morning, the same thing in the afternoon, but it will make a significant improvement. Are there any questions? We will be beginning tomorrow. I'm going to start calling contractors and uh, requesting bids and handing out the plans. So hopefully very soon uh, we'll get the plans, the bids back and be able to come to you with good news at the uh, we're getting ready to begin this project. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there board member committee reports? No. Oh, 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 excuse me. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, we're going to have a secondary first semester SL reports, Doctor. Hall, Greetings, Madam Chair, our illustrious school board, our distinguished division superintendent, and of course, our engaged citizenry present both here tonight and participating online. It is my uh, distinct pleasure to stand before you. I'm delighted to report out the academic progress that we are celebrating uh, as a direct result of our hard work, from our students. Uh, and of course, I can't go further without acknowledging the diligence of our entire GCHS faculty and staff that have uh, worked with the students to make these results possible. Particularly our STC, our site testing coordinator, Mr. Brandon Jones, who works tirelessly, not just to test, but to package this data in such a way where laymen uh, can have a full understanding of what these numbers actually mean and represent for our school community. I'd like to begin uh, with the first slide All right, we're going to start with reading. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Tanisha Rochelle and leading the charge with our ELA, uh, developing our new teachers, uh, working very diligently with our existing staff persons, those who have had a number of years in, in working with our, our, our department in reading. Um, 
like to start by saying that the state proficiency rate is 75 at this current rate. Uh, first semester, we were able to achieve higher than the state proficiency, which is always very important. But no one understand though, uh, with these spring testing windows opening up for us, we see that as a grand opportunity to rise above our, not just our present rate, but soar far beyond our, our state proficiency of 75. Our expectations uh, from our superintendent have been clear. Uh, we, we expect to meet and exceed 80% across, across the board in every content area. And reading is just the start of that. Next. Writing work keys, state proficiency, 75. That's a baseline. You can see that our 94.6 puts us well beyond the expecta uh, expectations that have been set aside by the state. And that's kind of where we want to remain, hovering well above uh, the, the state expectation for proficiency. Next. Is it going to upset the, uh, okay. So I've end of, end of course English uh, results, just again for the first semester, 75 state proficiency rate. We're comfortably above that at 86.6, but again, uh, we're set our, we've set our sights on achievement far beyond that, that present mark of our performance. Biology, uh, we know that with the deliberate and continual development of our new team members because we've had some turnover in science. Um, we're, we're comfortable that uh, Ms. Emily Jarrett and Ms. Kayla Robinson will be able to fine tune the development of our new team members uh, with this spring testing window. We, we, we look to be well beyond our, our present rate of 51.3 and we're gonna land ultimately just like we did last year uh, when, when, when all is said and done far above that 70% and give our superintendent the expectations uh, that, that he's been designing for us. All right. Ms. Erica Smith. Ms. Erica Smith. She's back there. All right, if you would please stand, Ms. Smith. Thank you. And though not present, I also would like to acknowledge Mr. Philip Deans. Those two have been a dynamic duo in uh, helping us to achieve consistently above and beyond the 70% that the Commonwealth of Virginia has deemed to be a sufficient pass rate. We stand at 94%. Am I reading that correctly? Is that, is that 94 <laughs> Algebra two. <laughs> Algebra two is not to be left out of the conversation. 70% pass rate for proficiency is the expectation with VDOE. Um, Ms. Smith, Mr. Dean said, nah, we can do better than that. And, and I'm confident yet again that that number will continue to increase as the testing window remains open for us. Uh, so we're really, really excited about that. And while I have an opportunity, I know this wasn't on the agenda. So uh, it's one of those ask for forgiveness instead of permission. But I would like to <laughs> leverage just a moment of, of the school board's time to uh, encourage our students and your parents and guardians to take full advantage of the extra help opportunities that our federal grants director, Ms. Robinson, our testing uh, division testing director, Ms. Whitaker, and of course, couldn't forget about the hard work, my transportation folks, uh, specifically Ms. Burgess. Um, they've worked tirelessly, tirelessly to map out some logistics related to before and after school tutoring, Monday through Friday, but they didn't stop there. We've got Saturday school as an opportunity for young people to come in and get all the help they may need. Notice mm -hmm. I didn't say want. So parents and guardians, we need your help to compel the young folks to uh, help us fill up those seats before and after school and on Saturday uh, for our Saturday school. Um, now with that shameless plug out of the way, I can get back to the normally scheduled program. Um, first semester, math overall, 93.3. Mm. 
It's a great group of folks there in that department. We are super excited about the work that they've got left. They're, they're actually uh, more enthused about the spring window of testing um, because of all of the hard work. Again, the alignment of, of the written, taught, and tested curriculum, we're really going to have an opportunity to show off uh, the commitment of, of those team members. Um, and this meeting is certainly not, not long enough to um, enumerate the names of all of the good people that contribute to the, the progress and the success of our students. Um, and, and I certainly don't want to uh, name names uh, because invariably I'll, I'll leave some off the list, but there's a short list uh, that, I, that I would absolutely be remiss if I didn't uh, bring forth before this board. And, and that's two of the absolute best administrators in Region 8. Um, and I'm proud to be a part of their team. And I'm happy to say that uh, Dr. Posey James and Dr. Fabiero are great representation. <laughs> Their hard work and due diligence, uh, dedication and commitment uh, is the reason why uh, seats to my left will be are filled right now with that heavy green and gold hardware. So I'm, I'm grateful to them and the entire team. I uh, couldn't thank them enough. Um, I wanna close if I may all right, by just uh, sharing some, some information relative to the progress of our, uh, our, our superintendent's commitment to uh, what the research demonstrates is in the best interest of high school children in particular. Um, the changes in the start dates, uh, the start times rather of, of the high school this year has uh, fallen in, in two different categories. Some people love it and some people hate it. Uh, it's very, very polarized. But again, I want to leave with what the data says. Um, we, we took a random sample of some preliminary data. Uh, we conducted comparative analyses of first semester from school year 2022-23 and cross-referenced that with preliminary data from first semester uh, for this present school year 23 and 24 in which we randomly selected one day per week, four weeks uh, across each month in September, October, November, and December. And what we were uh, left to observe across those 16 data sets is a 3% increase in first period attendance overall. 3% is not a small or insignificant figure as it relates to one of this district's greatest challenges, and that's chronic absenteeism. So 3%. Um, I, I do want that to be recognized as a pretty substantial net, net gain. Um, sure, I'll wait for you to clap and then I'll go on to the next <laughs> one. Because there's a lot of work that goes into creating an environment where students want to be uh, present and, and active and engaged every day. Um, and that also uh, led us to a decrease in first period tardies for our high school students. So not only are they getting here, more consistently, they're doing so more frequently on time, and that's a big deal. Increases can be observed in each of the grade level cohorts, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Uh, so shout out to Ms. Wright and Mr. Lowe, the best in the attendance business. Uh, We're grateful for all of their hard work, dedication, and commitment. And I just want to say thank you, and I'm so proud to be a part of this incredible team of dedicated educational professionals. Yes, yes, yes. There's a few questions. Right. He almost got off the hook. Right. So since you threw the curveball in there, we gotta make sure you can hit All right. when it's throwing back at you. No, I'm just playing. But um, what what would you say the the biggest question on um that that percentage mark going to something of seven to ten percent? Bring your question back. So you step. shared with us the 3% increase oh, sure, in first block sure. attendance. So what do you think is the, in your opinion, um, the next step to that to get to 7 to 10%? Right. So so we're certainly not um, not complacent with our 3% gain. So what we've got to do now is take a, a deeper dive into the into the data. Uh, again, we're, we're operating on a limited data set. We've got to uh, apply what we've been learning as best practices in, in our chronic absenteeism meetings led by uh, 
the, the good Dr. Kerry. Uh, we've got to start putting these uh, these thoughts and ideas into action consistently across the board. Um, and as we do that, then we can uh, ex expect that some of the outcomes will, will match what, it, what has taken place in other school districts, right? But I happen to believe that uh, with the group that we have assembled at GCHS, not only will we meet some of those expectations, but we've been, been doing a pretty fair job of showing that we can exceed them uh, once, once we you know, apply our, our group think. Um, so in brief, we're gonna take, take the road that the data leads. We're gonna continue to do what has been working, pivot from those practices uh, that have proven to be unfruitful um, and, and continue to praise the success. We've got to, again, I'll say it, um, and, and every opportunity that I have, the, the uh, wonderful ally uh, relationship with communities and schools. Uh, so we continue to, to do some of that praising of, of progress that was mentioned in, in the very early parts of our meeting. Um, and, and we not only praise the students, but we show appreciation to our staff as well um, and just continue to, to model, right? There, there's, a, there's a tight correlation between um, adults who, who are in the building Right. And, and, and students who decide that, you know what, if I see everybody that's, that I'm supposed to see in a day's time, that must be where I belong. Right. So when adults show up, guess who else follows in tow? That's the students. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Hall. Um, is there a four member committee report? Okay. Well, Second item, we'll move uh, to our public comment section. And prior to starting the, I would like to read our public comment mission here. It says, any citizen may address the board at any regular meeting. Persons wishing to appear before the school board should contact the superintendent or the school board clerk to submit a request via the public comments at gcps1.com or complete the sign up form for placement on the agenda. The chair is responsible for the orderly conduct of the meeting and shall rule on such matters as the appropriateness of the subject being presented and the length of time for each presentation. No one will be allowed to make personal attacks on any. Greensville County Public Schools personnel when addressing the board. No one will be allowed to take additional presentations to make, excuse me, additional presentations until everyone has an opportunity to make an initial presentation. The allotted period of time with the board during the public comment is three minutes. Okay. And we did have one person, Ms. Riddick, would you? Yes, ma'am. We have Jennifer Tanner, 308 Reese Street, um, in regards to start time. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board, and everybody in their appointed places. I am Ms. Jennifer Tanner. Um, I do have a son who is a freshman here at Greensville County um, High school, yes, thank you, thank you. Um, I do believe first that I am my son's first teacher for, for the most, it starts at home with me. And I do believe with the help of the board and the staff and the teaching that he will become self-sufficient in whatever he wants to do when he get into this world. Uh, with that being said, I was taught, you know, the early bird catch the worm, is that what, is, has, that what they say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I believe the importance of the time going back to, I think it was 725, 730, it teaches my son order. And um, I believe that is something that is needed um, in his, you know, in his life at the um, moment. I do want to acknowledge the 3% because whether it's a small change or a big change, it is a change. And it is showing that, you know, um, the new change did make some improvement. And I'm not shaming the old change. Um, and I do believe in change, but for me as a parent, I believe going back to the original time would definitely help my child. And that's what works for me and my household. So thank you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tano. Mm -hmm. 
are there additional comments? No? Okay. Let's Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, Dr. Edwards, and everyone in your place. My name is Latina Smith Givens, and I first would like to start off with um, con congratulating each of the, the teachers and the students on their achievements um, thus far. So, can we give them all a hand? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm here because there are some concerns with parents, staff, and students, and committee community members regarding the time change um, that was prior um, for the 2023 school year, 2023-24 school year. Um, I am a parent. I'm a product of Greensboro County Public School System. I'm a community member, and I also are, I am an employee of Greensboro County Public Schools. Um, the time change has neg negatively affected many families in the community in several ways. Our elementary students stand in the dark morning, in the dark in the mornings, waiting for the bus to arrive. Our high school and middle school students are arriving home much later, costing parents the convenience of having their older children care for their younger siblings while they work. Our age students have experienced income loss due to decreasing hours available to work. Our high school and middle school do not begin instruction when there is a two hour delay until 11.10 a.m. Additionally, our athlete students are missing instruction time on game days. Depending on the location of games, student athletes leave class early or they miss the entire class. Wyatt Middle School may miss two periods while Greensboro County High School missed the fourth block. After school tutorial, uh, after school programs for secondary do not end until 5.30 p.m., which with the previous time, they would be home by that time. So I also have, um, there are also petitions circling around in the community to uh, voice their concerns. And I also want to say that some parents did not receive a survey. It was told that surveys were given out for this particular change. I myself did not receive one. And I would like to know are there any other parents or guardians in the room that did not receive a survey about this? You said, I, mean, I have a niece. I don't know how to raise my hand for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did not receive a survey. So we were not given that opportunity to voice our opinion upon this change. So we are asking the school board at this time if they would consider revisiting this. Thank you. All right. Okay. To the action item. Someone else? Someone else have any comment before we move forward? Okay. okay. Um, going to move to our action items. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as we move into our action items, I would um, ask the board if we could amend the agenda by removing item D um, from the agenda as I um, need to gather some more information. That's remo removal of item D. Yeah, I move that we slash item D from the action item section of tonight's meeting. Okay, second. second. <laughs> it's been moved and properly second that we remove item D from our agenda on tonight. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is passed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, I'd like to start with our action items uh, in partnership with Parker Oil. Um, they have been gracious and good to Greensboro County Public Schools. And on last Friday, they delivered a $2,000 donation from Parker Oil Company that will be utilized at Greensboro Elementary School. Um, and what we are asking is for the and recommending is the approval of the Parker Oil donation in the amount of $2,000 to Greensville Elementary School. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'll entertain a motion. So move. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we accept the donation of $2,000 from Parker Oil Company. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those that oppose, nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried, and we're very appreciative. Absolutely. Okay. Now we're going to move to the 24-25 school calendar adoption. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to call Dr. Farkerson to the podium as we look at our 2024-2025 school calendar, who will explain. And I do want to acknowledge the hard work of the Superintendent's Advisory Committee. And I see uh, Mr. Zadanzowitz is in the room. Uh, Ms. Delbridge, I thought I saw her earlier. Um, Ms. Whitaker Brown, I see Ms. Whitaker Brown. Uh, and Ms. Brown um, from the elementary school, I see Ms. Mallory. And just thank you so much for your diligence in taking the information into our administration. Thank you so much for receiving the information and passing it along because we cannot have a good calendar until we receive input um, from our staff. So thank you so much for going back each time we meet and making those um, suggestions and giving them back to us in a timely manner. And this is the calendar. And from your recommendations, this is what we're recommending for approval for the 2024-25 school year. It's a big school year for us because we are going to be starting before Labor Day for the first time in Greensville County Public Schools. So that means students and teachers will be attending school in August, just like the rest of Region 8. Like the rest of Region 8. Generally speaking, when Greensville County comes back to school, our counterparts would have already been in school about three weeks. When you look at the time frame of um, the graduation, instead of in June, it will be in May. And if you look at the last day of school, it'll be in May. So I'll yield the floor to you, Dr. Farkson, as we move forward with our product of our 2024-25 calendar with recommendations received. And you have the floor, Dr. Farkson. Thank you, Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Edwards. So after our final um, meeting, I think it was one day last week, our advisory members went back to their schools and gave their schools an opportunity, members of their building, an opportunity to give feedback. We got feedback from elementary, middle, and high. We took the feedback that we received from the original draft calendar that was sent out and looked at the recommendations that were made and the requests that were made. There were some things that were not permissible because by law, Virginia law, there are days that we are required to give off. For example, the 30th, which is that Friday before Labor Day, when you are a pre-Labor Day start division, you are required to give that day off. And one of the asks was to take that and do some other things. Um, so there are some days that we are required to, um, to have in the calendar. There was an ask that we start earlier than the 12th, which is not permitted because we are not a grandfathered in school division for pre-Labor Day start. So we had to start on the 12th. We could not start on the 8th. So the first day of school for 24-25 would be August 12th. That would be the day that students return. You can see on the calendar, circled in black, our new teachers will return. The week after that, we would have all staff return, and then students would start on the 12th of August. We would get that Friday and that Monday, um, Labor Day, of course, we'd get that off. And then as we work through the school year, you can see that, um, and there, these were recommendations. One of the, um, actually from two of the schools, we had professional learning and development built in towards the end of the nine weeks. There was some recommendation around moving it around some. So we did do that. And we have moved half day PD days into the middle of the months of the nine weeks and not at the end. We have um, almost two weeks for um, Christmas. <laughs> almost, I mean, but they, Hey, we have to have 180 days, so we, 
<laughs> so we fit it in the best um, we could. I think it's great. Um, we also got recommendations, and we thought it was good to build in student, parent, teacher conferences on those two day, two full days that we have off in January. So that's January second and third, twenty twenty five. Wow, twenty twenty five. So we have built student teacher parent conferences in on those days we were already out it still gives our high school the two full of days they need to transition and to make those schedule changes as well as speak with parents because our first semester will have ended prior to christmas break mm. so <laughs> so then that means that after break you will be able to meet with parents and talk about what happened in the first semester. We do have Martin Luther King's birthday off. We have President's Day off. So there is basically on that second semester, a day off or more every month on the second semester. Mm -hmm. First semester, October, we don't actually get a full day off, which is the only month in 24-25 that we do not get an entire day off. So I think that looks pretty good. Our um, spring break, first week of April, as it is this year as well. And then we still get Easter, Good Friday, I'm sorry, Good Friday and Easter Monday off, four days off. Graduation is already um, denoted in this calendar, May, 2025. May 16th, and then the last day for students is the 22nd, last day for staff, 23rd. We get a week off and we start summer learning. And that is that is our 24-25 calendar. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I have one. Um, if you could help us understand uh, the adjusted dismissal for yes. both all and for sometimes students? So adjusted dismissal for students is when they are not in school the entire day. And we call it adjusted because it may not necessarily be down to the um, down to the minute, a half day. So we call it adjusted dismissal. And that means that students go home and on those green days where it says adjusted dismissal, students go home staff remains on the yellow days adjusted dismissal is adjusted for everyone so november 27th and december 20th the 20th is that half day before um our break which was one of the huge asks on the feedback that we got that everyone would be adjusted dismissal would leave we would close and then the other um big ask i want to highlight is that 23rd was an orig originally a half day it is now a day off for everyone, which was another um, big ask. But that is adjusted dismissal. So yellow is for everyone. Green is for students only. And it may not be down to the minute, half the day. So we call it adjusted dismissal. Any additional questions? I just have one more comment. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot, I guess. Oh, but sure. but please take back to this committee um, that it, it's proof of their hard work. This was not an easy task by any means. Um, and just a cry to the community that this first year is going to be rough on everybody. I think we started talking about this October of last mm -hmm. year. Yes. Knowing how much of a headache or, or um, inconvenience this will be for our community, but but I think you guys have done a great job with this draft, so I appreciate it. And they did. I want to tell you that the comments and the feedback that we got were really helpful in going back and making revisions. Of course, we could not give everyone everything that they asked for because we have to be in school 180 days. <laughs> um, but we tried as best we could. You can see I okay. <laughs> Mr. Redman will fix it. You can see I, I highlighted the sheets that they gave me. I was trying to make connections between what was being asked across all of the schools 
And um, those things that everyone said, hey, this isn't going to work. We tried to go back and make adjustment, adjustments based on that because it meant to us that that was really important to, to our staff. So we're hoping that we were able to at least that half day where you were coming before Christmas, that Friday and that Monday, people are excited that that is no longer a thing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Farkerson. And again, I want to echo to the committee and to everyone that submitted feedback. This is how we make um, the systemic change in Greensville County Public Schools. And, and we certainly thank you for your comments and keeping it as a guiding mark. When you go to school each year, you must go for 180 days. 180 days is that magic number. Thank you. We need to move to. OK, we seek a motion to approve the 2024-25 school calendar. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we accept the proposed 24-25 school calendar. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, and to the board. We are going to The um, Greensville County, the Greensville Elementary School covered walkway bids will be presented at this time for, for the vote of the board. Thank you, Madam Chair. This time I'll let it ask Mr. Winningham and um, Dr. Scott to come forward once again. And Dr. Scott, could you give us, uh, and you, Mr. Winningham, give us an update on the intercom system here at the high school as well? I'm going to start with the intercom. Uh, don't know if, how many people knew we had an incident where our intercom at the high school went down uh, the intercom is from 1988 and there were no parts to fix it uh, we were in the process of getting uh, going through the process of getting out our POs and stuff for that but with the help of the finance department we were able to quickly go ahead and get the PO out uh, our partner that we uh, went with um, told me it was going to be four weeks to even get the stuff in. I told him that we were really in a desperate need, that it was a security issue. So he went to the company that was supplying the parts or the, the new system, and they moved us to the top of their list, and within a week it arrived. The very next day they were on site putting it in, the day after that, we were back up with new intercoms. Um, the elementary school will be next. They have an aging system also that is pretty much in the same position. Um, he promised me he would try to get to it as soon as possible, but he did want to make sure he got the high school up and working, so we did have a working intercom because it was a security issue. But I did want the board to know that that issue is back. I mean, that is no longer an issue, and we are back up and running. Any questions about that? Mm -hmm. All right. uh, as you know, we've been looking for a few years for a covered walkway uh, for the <coughs> elementary school. Ms. Coker has hounded me <laughs> uh, on numerous occasions, uh, that it was, but it was really something that was needed. Those babies are getting off the bus, and for them to get off the bus with that many students getting off at one time, it's a sheer miracle they do it every morning. If you haven't seen them do it, you need to come up and watch it because it's it's interesting, but they have it down to a science. But um, we've been working to get that done. We got the funding. Um, we opened the bids this week, and uh, we have made recommendations with Dr. Edwards 
uh, to the board and he's going to make you that recommendation but uh, for the bid. And when we do that, I will be making phone calls tomorrow to and get the PO out so we can get that started. We're going to attempt to get it done over the shortened summer. We're not, I'm not going to promise it won't go into next school year, but we will work with uh, the administration to do the best we can so it would be the least intrusive to them as, as we can do it. But it is something we're excited to get moving with. Thank you, Ms. Winningham and Dr. Scott. We're going to move to the Queen's Council. Okay, we need a, a motion at this point. So moved. Second. It's been moved and properly second. We will call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and the motion is carried. Now we will move to the Prince County High School calculation of GPA amendment, which will be presented for the vote of the board. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, as you know, last month we presented the calculating GPA at Greensville County High School and um, we are bringing back an amendment to the current policy. And that amendment states that for a year long course that students participate in, that at the end of the first semester, that that midway point they will utilize for calculation into their final grade point average. And again, this affects the year long course which is what the board asked me to investigate. I will entertain the motion regarding this subject. So move. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we accept the presentation for the vote of the calculation of GPA. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. And this calculation um, is would not take place until the 24-25 school year. As Val and Salutator Turin has already been calculated for the 23-24 school year. I want to be clear of what was just done here in our school system. Okay. Okay. We're now ready to move to closed session. So move. Second. It's been moved and properly second that we move to closed session to discuss, consider, or interview prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotions, salaries, discipline, or resignations of specific. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, off public officers. Appointments or employees of the school board. Thank you for your attendance. We're about to ready to go. We're just removing it. All Thank right. you, guys. All right. Mm -hmm. it. Thank you all for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Okay. We're now uh, moving out of closed session into open meeting to discuss our findings. Do we need to entertain a motion? Okay, roll call. Rick? Madam Chair Janet Roberts. Here. Vice Chair Rustin Jesse. Yes. Mr. Ron L. Pearson. Here. Ms. Bessie Reed Moore. Aye. Madam Chair, administration would um, ask the board uh, to for approval of the personnel agenda as presented in closed session. So moved. Second. It's been moved and probably second that we accept the recommendations made in closed session regarding personnel. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, Those are opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries. Yes, I'm You didn't. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> do you want me to do it again? Yes. No, okay, no, okay. I got it. All right. Just follow his lead. Madam Chair, and to the board for announcements, uh, we want to congratulate our students um, at Greensville County High School for coming off of a, uh, a good testing semester during first semester. Um, and we want to wish our students at Wyatt, they're coming off of a first semester testing as well. Um, we will hear that um, presented at our next board meeting. I want to also send congratulatory that our boys um, uh, finished second and in the region. Our girls finished, finished fifth and they will be playing in the regional tournament uh, next week. And we will be sending that information out being social media once we know who each team would be playing. Um, we are so happy for our sports teams, so happy for our academic performance that's being done here in Greensville County Public Schools as we move at 212 degrees. That's all I have. Having in, okay. We'll accept the motion for adjournment. So moved. Sorry. It's been moved and properly second that we adjourn the meeting for this evening. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Oh.